Now this morning, boys and girls and young people, for those that are here, I have brought with me another of the Mr. Men cups. And this cup represents Mr. Bump. And I've got a picture also of Mr. Bump this morning. Now, let me tell you some things about Mr. Bump. Mr. Bump lived in a square house with a big black chimney pot. And he was best friends with Mr. Tickle. And of course, he had a sister called Miss Whoopsie-Daisy. Now, you think of his name, Mr. Bump. Why was he called Mr. Bump? Well, the answer is very simple. He was always bumping into things. He was accident prone. You could really say he was like a haphazard type of a chat. He was very disorganized. And every day, he was daily getting hurt. And you can see here that he's covered in bandages from head to toe. And of course, that's the picture that Roger Hargraves wanted to get across to the boys and girls in this book. He was always covered in bandages. You see, when Mr. Bump walked down the street, he bumped into the lamppost. And then he would have said sorry to the lamppost. One day there was a storm whenever he awoke from his sleep. And he discovered that his chimney pot was cracked. And he thought, I need to fix that. So he got this big long ladder out of his shed and he started putting the ladder up against his house and you know what happened? He broke every window in the house. That's how accident prone he was. And whenever he eventually got up to fix the chimney pot and took the new one up, then he fell down. And of course the second chimney pot broke as well. He had many, many jobs. Mr. Bump was a farm labourer. And the farmer who employed him, he gave him the job of carrying the milk can across from the dairy house to the uh, farmhouse. And didn't Mr. Bump trip on the cat and spill the milk? And of course, the cat lipped it all up. And if the farmer, well, he had to sack him. He, he got a job as a postman. And you know, the fire brigade was called out because he got his hand caught in the post box and he couldn't get it out. And of course, everybody laughed. He even got a job as a joiner. And he thought, this would be a good job for me. And he only lasted one day because every time he went to hammer the nail, he hit his thumb. And of course, you can just know how painful that would be. And the man who employed him thought, he's no good as a joiner. I have to let him go home. And he had to send him home. One day, Mr. Bump went on holiday. And um, he was walking along the beach. And he got his foot stuck in a child's bucket and he couldn't get it out. And the more he shook at it, he couldn't get it out. And then he fell down a hole. And he was all night in the hole. And of course, he felt very sad. But then he had an idea. If I can't be a farm labourer, I can't be a postman, I can't be a joiner, I know what I'll be. I'll be an apple picker. And he went away to Mr. Barley's farm. And he said, I could be an apple picker. How could you be an apple picker? You'll fall down the ladder. No, I could bump into the trees because I don't need a ladder and I could catch the apples when they fall. Well, Mr. Barley thought, well, that's a great idea. And that's exactly what Mr. Bump did, boys and girls. He ended up an apple picker and he just walked about the orchard, bump, and down come the apples, bump, and he was putting them into a basket. And that got me thinking, Mr. Bump, with his bandages, who was always bumping into things. Think of the nature of our bodies. Our bodies are made up of a skeleton covered in flesh. And every one of us has, what, about 216, 217 bones in our bodies. Nurses, correct me if I'm wrong. And, of course, our bones are very easily broken. Just like Mr. Bump. Because his body was full of bones. Maybe you're here and you've cut your finger and you've had to get a plaster. Maybe you've bruised your elbow or your knee because you fell off your bike or you've tripped in your laces. Or, or maybe you've even broken your bones, broken your elbow, broken your arm. What about breaking your legs? Anybody here ever broken their leg and ended up in plaster? Did it last forever? No. What happened? 
Well, your body healed in time. And you see, that's the nature of our bodies. That's the way God has made us. Doesn't the Bible tell us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made? And even when our bodies become bruised and broken, that body can go through a process of self-healing and, of course, using medication, nurses and doctors and whatever. But I want you to think of something else. Not only the nature of our bodies, but think of having a new body. Do you know what the Bible tells us? It says here in the book of Romans chapter 8, And not only so, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, that's within our bodies, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. Do you know one day whenever we get a new body like unto the Lord Jesus' body, there'll be no bandages in heaven. Because there'll never be a broken bone. In fact, the Bible tells us there's no night there. There's no pain there. There's no suffering there. You'll never be sick. You'll never have a worry. You'll never have a fear. You'll never have a dread. And you know what? When you get a new body like Jesus' body, your body will never, ever decay. It will never, ever die. And of course, you'll never see a Mr. Bump in heaven because there'll be nobody there with bandages who's bumping into things and hurting himself. You'll see Mr. Beautiful there, but you'll never see Mr. Bump. Why? Because once he's got a new body, that's forever. Can I tell you one other thing about Mr. Bump? The need of the body. See, people were shouting to Mr. Bump, Watch out! What's that lamppost? You know what they said about him? He never listens. He just constantly walks on. Can you imagine walking down the street and watch the lamppost? Bang! Oh, I've hurt my eye. I've hurt my head. See, Mr. Bump, he never listened. And that's what the people said about him. He never listens. He never learns. But I want you to listen. Because there's a need for your body. Because inside your body is a soul. An immortal soul is going to live forever. And if you want a new body like unto the Lord Jesus' body then you need to listen and you need to tend to the need of your soul. And of course, that means recognizing your sin. And that means receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that means having the assurance that you're found in Christ and you're prepared and ready for the great of eternity. And that's your greatest need today if you're out of Christ. The nature of the body, it's easily broken. You can have a new body, but only in Christ. And the need of your body before you die is to make sure that you're saved and you're in Christ and your soul is ready for heaven and home and you're living in light of this day when the Bible talks about the redemption of the body. The Lord bless you this morning and thank you for listening.